Hey everyone, welcome back to my sword and stone concept prop tutorial. So now that we have this drawn out, we can decide two ways to take this to 3D, or at least to render it out to look a little more 3D. We could either do an isometric drawing or just sketch it by hand, or in my case, let's jump into Maya and just block it out really quickly in 3D. So this is gonna be super simple. So I started by just creating a basic cube and I hit Control D to duplicate that cube. And it looks like right now I have snapping turned on for my movement. I actually want to turn that off. So I'm going to go into my movement section here, double click that. And where, where it says step snap, we're going to say off. Okay. And now we can also, while we're in here, we might as well just create like a little bit of a lighting setup just so this looks pretty nice once we get it done. So I'm going to make a floor piece by clicking on the polygon plane and hit R, we're gonna scale that up and drop it down to the base. And I like, to, when I do lights, I usually do maybe two directional lights and I'll show you what I do. So I usually choose my first one, create directional light and then we're gonna turn the shadows on. And this is a nice, good first light, but you'll notice it's a little too intense right there. So we could have it like shoot across here Maybe, maybe the shadow goes back that way, but it's still pretty intense. So usually what I do is I'll create, I'll duplicate that light and then I'm going to turn it. So the shadow's like that. And then within this shadow settings, you can check right up here under there are attribute settings. We're going to go to shadows and I'm going to check use depth map and then uncheck it. So now there's no shadows being projected from this light and we're going to turn its intensity down so it just kind of fills in these these shadow colors here and now we also want to turn on ambient occlusion give us a little bit of lighting down there at the base and i'm going to make these shapes just a little bit larger so the ambient occlusion works a little bit better on them and if you want sometimes i'll create a third light so we've got the lights and we'll do a quick point light and point light and give you a little more variety. Maybe I'll put it just like right about there. I'm gonna turn down its intensity just a little bit, just to kind of add a little bit to the scene. So yeah, you can see kind of some gradients casting across these objects. And we're actually gonna to go to show and we're gonna turn off some of these extras like the grid. And I'm actually gonna turn off manipulator. Well, no, we'll, we'll leave manipulators on for now. But it's basically these little grid lines. Okay, so now let's build this out a little bit better, at least a little closer to what it actually is in our sketch. And if you take a look at that, we've got a picture over here. So we've got this top base piece, center point, and then the very bottom base, and then the sword. So let's create the very bottom piece, and I'm just gonna do a few extrusions on this. So right click face, and then up here we got a little extrusion button. Scale that down a little bit, and this is just for that notch. And hit G to repeat your last action. Let's scale it up just a bit. And now I'm going to do a slice. We're going to grab the cutting tool here. I'm holding Control to kind of cut it at about that point. And I want to scale from this whole area out. So we're going to click one face, and then double click, and it should select them all. And we're just going to scale that out a little bit. And remember, we had a little bit of a rounded edge. So I'm going to throw a few of these in here to get that rounded edge. And we're right click and go to edge select, double click. And if we hit B, it's going to give us like a brush selector. Let's see how big my brush, my brush looks like it must be too big. I'm holding B to try changing the scale of my brush, but it doesn't seem to be working. Hmm. Well, this is good to have issues when you're trying to figure something out and try to illustrate how to use it. So tap E. So I'm turning on soft select mode, but I'm trying to change the amount of the soft select. So maybe this is just really too tiny. Let's see what happens if we scale this up really quick. Just the problem solve. There we go. See our soft select was just, the brush was just way too big. So I made that smaller when it deletes this object. I was just kind of to solve that issue. And there we go. So now, now our brush, see I'm holding B and sliding left on the thumbstick to kind of, or left on the uh, 
left click just to scale that a little bit. And we want to have it so it affects not everything. So we're getting that little bit of a rounded shape. I'm able to compress that a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. So let's look at that. See how it's kind of notched right now? We don't want that. We want it to look smooth. So let's grab all these edges. Hit B to turn off soft selection. So we just want these right here. And we want to, let's see if we can find the proper setting so I don't have to make everyone search it, search around for it. Because I do have a shortcut for it right here. We basically want to set soft or hard edges. And I think it's right here. Yeah, so under mesh display, we want to do soften edge. And then we want to grab this edge and we want to do a hard edge. So mesh display and harden edge. So now what that gives us is kind of a nice softer look to this area, even though it's notched pretty roughly. And if you wanted to add some more softness, you could add some more lines in between here, just like that. Double click them and just scale them slightly just to give it a little bit better of a gradient. There's lots of ways to do this. It's just kind of a quick and dirty way that I used. So now we're gonna scale this up, grabbing this bar so it doesn't change the height of it at all. Slide it down a little bit. And I'm going to duplicate that. And this is going to be that point in between. And if you remember, that had a notch in it too. So let's create that notch. Like right about there. And we're going to extrude these pieces in. Remember I did that selection where I selected one face and then double click the second one. It's like it all the way around. That's how we did that. Okay, so we've got that notch in there now. And now I'm thinking like it might be interesting to sort of spin this a little bit so it's a, it's not just you know all lined up. Maybe this will be spun with it. That could be interesting. So it like gives a little bit more detail to the sword and stone. It looks more interesting shapes instead of just having these stacked directly on top of each other. So now that we have that, let's duplicate this once more. Or actually, we could just grab this top face. So we're going to click the object, right click, go to face, and we're going to do an extrusion. And this is for that little inset for the sword right on the top. Scale that up. I hit G just to repeat the extrusion. And I'm going to bring that in just a little bit. And I want to give some of these points little bevels. Uh, we'll do that in a little bit, though. You will notice that it's really dark over here again. That's because my secondary lighting isn't hitting where I wanted it to. So there we'll hit it there. So see how it's giving, we got nice light hitting up on top. The shadows aren't too dark. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now we just need to build the sword. So to build the sword, let's just create another cube. Bring that up, spin it. And this is going to be the blade part first. And we don't have to build this in very much detail because we can draw a lot of those details over this. This is just kind of the uh, um, sort of the rough, the rough construction of it. We can take this as far as we want to, but really all you need is just kind of the basic shapes. So you don't have to really think of this as advanced modeling. I just kind of sometimes I get a little more caught up in this than I need to. But I already have the design of the sword made, so I don't need to like think about the design. I can just think about improving any aspects on the design that I want. And in this case, we're going to do an extrusion on each side here. So I'm selecting both sides. Hit extrude. And make sure you don't hit anything else and just pull from these points. And you should be able to... Oh, see, that's where my problem. See, that's pulling like left and right. So let's hit W now. And I'll pull these down to get a little bit of that angle. Hit G again, and it's pull from the blue. There we go. So now we could we could alter this a little bit if we want to grab like these sides here, and then scale them in just a little bit, just to give a little more interest to the the uh, blade part there. I really need to look up the proper namings of sections of blades and things like that. And this is going to actually be the top part of the blade. I'm going to create a cylinder 
and this is going to be the handle. There's the scale that way down. I want the handle to be a little bit round, so maybe we'll duplicate the handle so we have like an offset of the thinner part of it. And I'm looking at my drawing, and it looks like this is a little bit wider the drawing, but we can always alter that. And also, if we wanted, we could do another duplicate of this, and this could be kind of that center point of the blade. And if we really want to get into some more detail, let's let's actually give this a little bit of a blade shape. So I'm grabbing both sides by going to face, and we're doing extrusion. We're going to extrude it out, and then once it gets to the max point, we're going to grab the red side here, scale it in, and there we go. And I'm actually going to sharpen that edge. Remember, we can go up to Mesh Display, Harden Edge. That looks a little more like a, a sword shape. I'm going to grab these other pieces and scale them in just a little bit. It's a little more narrow. And I'm going to grab here, and I want to scale these out just a little bit so it's wider on that angle. Okay, now we have that. Let's let's check. Let's take a look at our our drawing just to compare. So it looks like we need we need a little more height here. Uh, the sword's looking pretty good, but yeah. So we can do this a few different ways. We could either go up, but there's more objects the sword way. So let's actually pull this down and just lower our floor a little. And I'm gonna right click, grab our vertices, slide those down, and let's take a look at that image again. Yeah, that's much more accurate. But let's add those little notches in here that the drawing has. And we're gonna go right click, go to face, grab those extrusions, or grab those faces, and just bring those in a little bit. And now just for a few lighting things, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of these, some of these edges here, and we're gonna bevel them. So let's go to our little handy toolkit, hit bevel. I believe you can yeah, yeah. Now you can use the middle mouse key to kind of slide that bevel a little bit. And this will help catch the light. I'm going to do this on a few faces. And you can paint all this stuff in too if you don't feel like doing it this step. This is just another extra step. It'll save a little bit of time, so I'm going to do it now. And let's grab the middle one even and just bevel that a little bit. I'm just kind of grabbing all my my main edges that I want to add a little bevel to. And I'm even going to add a little to this edge. So it gives it a little more of a worn down look. We could actually do it like that. That's pretty cool looking too. Like sometimes you'll even find new looks for your design by doing some of these bevels. That's actually pretty cool like that. Uh, let's, let's consider doing that to this point too. This is going to probably not work out as well just because it's going across such different depths and things like that. So let's see what we got here. Oh, we can actually do quite a bit too. Let's do just a little bit to that. There we go. So now we have our sword in the stone pretty much worked out. I might make this base just a little bit wider. And you can see I'm grabbing from that flat square, so it's our flat shape, so it's pulling from all directions. Let's look at our sword again. We move that over. Look at our drawing again really quick. It looks, it's pretty close. I mean, I changed some design things and that's fine. And I've got my patterns and stuff and I could I'll probably draw those out and then skew them on top or figure something out as we go. Yeah, there we go. Let's, uh, let's look at it like this. Find a good, a good lighting setup for it. I think right here actually looks pretty good. And then, you know, I did spin that in the beginning, but I kind of like when it matches a little bit better. Like that, that almost, I kind of like the more classic look. Yeah, so let's find a good perspective here. And then when you're taking like a, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I'm not going to render it out or anything. Just click that, the multi-sample. And one step further, if you really wanted to, we could throw some materials that are the correct colors onto here. Let's do that really quick. We're going to leave the gray, the bottom one gray. I'm going to grab a few of these and we're going to right click. New material. And there's a bunch of materials to choose from right here. Let's keep it really simple and just have it be a Lambert. Or no, let's actually make it a blend. So over here, let's slide all the way to the end. I have Lambert. 
you can switch that right here and make it a blend so we can have a little bit of shine or something if we want. Any you of your specular and stuff right down here, you can add, subtract. But let's grab one of these colors from my image, double clicking, and right off screen, I'm going to grab this color. And from here, once you have your color, you can kind of tweak a little bit, maybe a little bit brighter. It's pretty dark. Um, yeah, there we go. And then for the sword, I actually want some of these pieces to be kind of that gold color. So we're going to do another material. I'm just going to do, maybe it's, we could do blend or fong. Fong would work too, probably. Let's do fong. Grab that color pick. And we're going to grab some of that, that gold color. That's a little bit brighter. And then for the other parts, this will be like a metal. And we're going to do another new Lambert. And you could name these, or I guess not Lambert, but uh, new Fong. You could name these to keep this a little more organized if you wanted. I kind of like this blue metal. It's probably going to be a little too dark, but we're going to grab that and then just slide it to a lighter color. And the handle. And a lot of these things we can draw over and stuff, so a lot of this is just going to change. But I'm going to give the handle, it's going to be a Lambert, so it doesn't really, it kind of absorbs the light. And it's going to be a, like a deep purple or maybe that blue color. I feel like a dark, deep blue. There we go. So there's our rough sword in the stone. We could change some of these dots. Maybe this piece would be like, we'll go back and look at our, I think it was like the third one we created. No, that was we want the second one we created to get kind of that, oh, still the wrong color. This is why you should name them. I forgot which one it was. Was it the blend? Nope. Really, I should just edit this part out, right? There we go. I just wanted to have that gold down there. And this is, this is plenty to start with. This is all we, you know, this is way more than we probably needed. So now we just kind of want to choose an angle. That's like a good way to represent this, this piece. I think something like that. And, you know, I might modify some of the sizings of things a little bit still. This, this is, it's almost taking too much attention away from the sword right now. So that's kind of why I'm changing that. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. If you want, you can have this go out as far as you want to see the, in case you want to keep like that shadow or something. That's that's pretty good right there, I think. It's, and you could play with the lighting a little if you wanted. So remember, this is just that light. This is just the one to fill the shadow. And then maybe we have the shadow cast across here more, maybe. I think that's actually pretty good right there. That gives us a good, a good base to play with. Okay, now that we have that, oh, we have this one point light too, we can adjust. And I kind of like it hitting, ooh, that's kind of cool, huh? See how it hits the sword, the metal on the sword? But it does seem to kill some of our depth and shadow, so we'll just add that in manually. Okay, I'm just watching for that shadow tangent. There we go. So now all we do is just take a screenshot of this and I use the little uh, snipping tool that's default to, to Windows, but you can use the Mac screenshot tool or whatever you want really. But yeah, so now I just take that and paste it into our dock. For some reason it didn't show up. I don't know what's going on here. Hang on. Okay, there it goes. So it's paste into your dock and you can shift drag it a little bit larger. And then if you want you to slide over, I mean, you could turn our references off or we could bring this up on top. And what I'm actually, I want to save this, this one, the higher res one, but we're going to scale a version down and this will be a reference right up here. There we go. So now we have a pretty good 3d base for this we could add some wonkiness we could hand draw it whatever we want to do like we can go in here and even do edits afterwards like if i want to make the sword bigger that is grab it Control c Control v i'm holding shift to put it into place and i'm just going to move this scale thing down here and you can just scale it up if you want to make the sword bigger or smaller and i want to make it 
a tad bigger. But actually, I want to put it into the uh, stone a little further. So you can just turn the transparency down if this is what you want to do. And it's going to go through here and make a quick edit. And I'm just using the mouse right now. This doesn't have to be like super detailed or anything. But yeah, see how that, that looks a little bit better. But yeah, in the next episode, let's take this and draw over it. And from there, we'll start painting it out and adding detail and character. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for stopping by. Like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. And yeah, take care.